Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here is your latest integral of the day. And I know it's been a while since I've recorded one of these. I'm sorry. Things have been so hectic with finals. So anyways, I hope your integration skills are still sharp. This one's pretty straightforward just so we don't get too rusty. And then I'll dig up some spicier ones to record during the winter break. So notice here we have a rational function. The degree of the denominator is already higher than the degree of the numerator, so I don't have to worry about first doing long division. I can just jump right in and find the partial fraction decomposition of the integrand. So in order to do that, I need to factor the denominator. And a lot of the times when we notice that there's four terms, the method to use is factoring by grouping. So looking at just the first two terms, I can take out an x squared. And then I'm left with x plus 1. And then the second two terms, similarly, x plus 1, they don't have a common factor, so their common factor is 1 times x plus 1. And then now you can see, oh yeah, both uh, x plus 1s appear in the denominator. So if I factor that out, then I have x plus 1 times x squared plus 1. And then that tells me my decomposition will have the form a over x plus 1, since that's a non-repeated linear factor, plus bx plus c over x squared plus 1, since that's an irreducible quadratic. Good? Okay, now let's solve for a, b, and c. So I'm going to go through and multiply by x plus 1, x squared plus 1. And then we'll set up a nice system of equations. So we have 4x equals a times x squared plus 1 plus bx plus c times x plus 1. So 4x equals ax squared plus a plus, this will be bx squared plus bx plus cx plus c. And then to solve for a, b, and c, we need to group the coefficients of our like terms together and set them equal to each other. So starting with x squared, I don't see any x squareds on the left-hand side. So 0 has to equal a plus b. Then moving down x to the first, I have a 4x to the first. So 4 has to equal b plus c. And then lastly, x to the 0, or my constant term, I don't have one at all. So that has to equal what's left over here, my constants, a plus c. Okay, we have three equations, three unknowns, so we can definitely solve this system. And in fact, it's not too difficult because notice each of the equations only involves two variables at a time. Beautiful. So play around with it however you want. I'm just going to say a is equal to negative c. And then I'm going to substitute that in for a up top. So negative c plus b is equal to 0. And then let me rewrite this equation underneath strategically. So c plus b equals 4. And then if I add these two together, notice c cancels out. And I get 2b is 4. So b is 2. And then if b is 2, then I can see c is 2. And then a is going to be negative 2. So everything just fell into place really beautifully. OK, great. Now we're ready to roll. So we can go back to our integral. And we have now a, which is negative 2 over x plus 1, plus bx plus c, 2x plus 2, over x squared plus 1 dx. All right. Now, a lot of the time when you find your partial fraction decomposition on that irreducible quadratic, you end up wanting to split the terms in the numerator. Um, that way we can integrate term by term. So we're going to have three terms total to integrate. So we have negative 2 over x plus 1 plus 2x over x squared plus 1 plus 2 over x squared plus 1 dx. And then from here, everything falls into place beautifully. So Antiderivative of negative 2 over x plus 1 is going to be negative 2 natural log absolute value x plus 1 plus. Now, it's up to you if you need to do the u sub or not for this. 
I can just kind of do it in my head, and most of you probably can too at this point. If you let u equal x squared plus 1, du is just going to be 2x dx, which is precisely what I have in the numerator. So I don't really need to write out all the steps of the u sub. I know if I were to do it, I would have 1 over u du, right? Because the u would be in the denominator. So that's the antiderivative is just going to be natural log absolute value of u, but I'm looking x squared plus 1 is never negative. So I can just leave those as parentheses instead of absolute value. Okay, plus, and then 2 over x squared plus 1. The 2 is just a constant. It's going to come along for the ride. And we know antiderivative of 1 over x squared plus 1 is tan inverse of x plus c. So that one I think was super straightforward. If I were to put that on a test, that's like a confidence booster, bare minimum uh, knowledge check sort of situation. You know what I mean? Nice and straightforward, but covers a lot of good foundations. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. But don't worry, when I have a little bit more free time, I'll dig up some spicier stuff. That way we can all practice sharpening our skills a little bit more with integration. And I hope everyone's doing well. Thank you so much for your support. The channel's growing. I'm hoping for even more growth in the coming year. So make sure that you guys subscribe, share, comment so that it supports the videos in the algorithm. And also let, you know, whoever uh, might benefit from this channel know about it. If you have any classmates or students in your life or whoever, please spread the word. You can also see what I'm up to day to day, see little clips of my family, my routine. If you want to follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Math with Professor V. Thank you guys so much for your support. I love you all, and I'll be back sooner than later. Bye!